There you go. Uh, hello, good evening, guys. How are you doing? Cool. A little bit more enthusiasm. Come on. All right. Happy New Year. So, how many of you are like me and made very strong New Year resolutions? No one? Just two? Weak. Uh, anyways, I had a whole skit planned, but I guess I can't do that anymore. Uh, <laughs> forget it. So the top two resolutions that people make are one, work out, two, eat healthy. So we are Lish, we are a Seattle-based startup, and we try to help you out with the second one, essentially making sure that you guys are stay on the straight and narrow and eat healthy. My name is Snuggy, that's right, it's Snuggy. Uh, I say it's, it's, it's similar to the blanket, but I was actually born way before the stupid blanket, so I forgot to trademark, it's my own fault. Uh, so what are we here to solve? People really want to eat good, delicious, healthy food, but we have no time. Uh, take me for instance. I mean, I start the week off with really good intentions. I have really good, expensive produce in my fridge. By the end of the week, I have no idea where my intentions went. I still have my produce, but I can't use it anymore. <laughs> I, people just work too hard. You come back home, you're tired, you're cranky. You just have no time uh, to start cooking. So what do you do at that point? You actually go for instant gratification. So you either walk to your nearest restaurant, take your phone out or your PC, go for uh, your favorite delivery service and have something delivered to you. So you end up with something that's usually expensive, mostly unhealthy, and more often than not, pretty boring. So think about it. You do end up with a really full stomach, but you're also full of guilt at the end of the day. So what do we do? <laughs> we definitely are not super happy. So that's where Lish was born. Uh, remember, we tried to start off with getting to uh, good, delicious food. We ended up with pretty sucky options. So Lish is born to kind of bridge the gap. What's our solution? So Lish is a product, it's a marketplace, where we try to connect you folks, you busy folks, with Seattle-based chefs. These chefs make really good, healthy, handmade uh, meals, and Lish is the facilitator for delivering these meals from these chefs to you folks. Whether it's a family of four or like me, a family of one, our startups or companies of 50, we make sure that we can get you really good food, take care of all your dietary options, and since we have a lot of chefs on our platform, make sure that you get the right plethora. Actually, that's my other new resolution. Start using dictionary words, so I use plethora. I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> so make sure that you get a lot of good, authentic cuisine options. Uh, but the consumer is just one part of the value prop. We also have chefs on the other side of the equation. The US has almost 100,000 chefs. These guys spend a lot of years in culinary schools. They also work a lot in kitchens trying to hone their skills up. Uh, an average chef in the US, believe it or not, makes only around $40,000 a year. And they work almost 60, 70 hours a week. So think about it, not making a lot more than minimum wage. Uh, there's a lot of underutilized capacity here. And we, as a platform, are trying to unlock this capacity and make sure that they can work for you. Chefs are super happy. Uh, they actually get to connect with you, the end consumer. They actually get feedback from you. They have flexible uh, time period that they can work in. Actually, we have one of our chefs who only works four days a week, and she takes the fifth day and goes skiing. I'm not sure how the snow is right now, but she says she's been doing pretty well, so good for her. And at the end of the day, they end up making three or four times what they normally make working in other places. So that's great for chefs. We started off with around three chefs. We actually grown to about 15 chefs now. These are alumni of Canlis. Uh, wow, actually it's advanced way beyond that it should. I'm sorry. These are, uh, these are alumni of Canlis, French Laundry, uh, Tom Douglas restaurants, and many, many more. So the product, we started off as an iPhone app. So if you have an iPhone, I mean, just search for Lish on the uh, App Store and make sure you download us and, and give us a whirl. Uh, for others, uh, namely the Android users, and since this is Seattle, I'm assuming some of you, at least one or two, have a Windows phone. So uh, <laughs> we actually did develop an op. I mean, I have a Windows phone. I'm an ex-Microsoft guy. I love my Windows phone, but I know we are in the minority. Uh, we have uh, we have an optimized website that's really good on mobile. So lishfood.com, go to lishfood.com and check us out. But instead of me blabbing about the product, I'll let my co-founder actually talk about it a little, if it starts playing. Lifestyle. As much as you love homemade meals, you don't have time to cook. With Lish, discover healthy homemade meals prepared by cooks in your community that you can order for same-day delivery or schedule in advance. 
Every dish is displayed in beautiful high-definition photography and has a description, a list of ingredients, as well as reviews from past customers. You can also learn more about the cook who prepared the dish, read their bio and testimonials, and browse through their cookbook. When you know what you want, you can easily place an order, often in just three taps. Our friendly delivery driver will send you a text when they're on their way. Lish, healthy, home-style meals for busy people. Not bad. It's the first time I'm hearing it. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, guys, I mean, the, the pictures there are really, really good. I mean, it's almost food porn. It is food porn. Uh, that being said, I mean, the only thing I can say is the food actually tastes much better than the pictures, and that's saying a lot. Uh, as you can see, I've definitely been eating a lot, too. Um, Hopefully it starts. Oh, there you go. Cool. Perfect. So what's the business model? We're actually on a revenue share business model with the chefs. Uh, meals are between 11 to actually 10 to 15 bucks. Uh, on average, around 12 bucks. Uh, the chefs actually make a profit. I'm talking about profit, not just revenue. A profit of $5 per meal. They end up making about $40 to $50 an hour, so way more than minimum wage. Uh, we actually offer a lot of convenient delivery times. And you can order up to 6.30 p.m. to get food on day off. So when you're stuck on 520, as I was usually, or when you're walking back home from South Lake Union or anywhere in Pioneer Square, take your phone out, whip out your PC. Actually, whip out your phone. I mean, nobody whips out their PC when they're walking. Hopefully not. Uh, and uh, just check us out and make sure the food is waiting for you when you get back home. Uh, the team. The team is actually really strong. We are about five. We just added a sixth person uh, who's actually a chef, which is awesome. So it's not just techies. It's also techies and chef, a good melting pot. Uh, we, are ex -alum we are alumni of Microsoft, alumni of Amazon, and an alumni of a bunch of good restaurants in Seattle. Uh, it's a good crew. Uh, the other thing is we also have really good, strong advisors. Uh, how many of you know Eaton Stowe? Uh, hopefully you guys have heard of uh, How to Cook a Wolf. Anchovies and olives, uh, Tavoletta, I think. Anyway, a bunch of uh, great restaurants. So the good news that we got last week was he actually signed on to be our advisor. He loved the platform, uh, so we were pretty happy with that. But but hold your applause, hold your applause. The great news is he actually wants to be on the platform. So if you sign up for Lish, you can actually get Ethan Stowe made dishes delivered to you at your house. So we're going to have him, and well, that actually deserves an applause. I mean, it's <laughs> we got a startup. We got Ethan Stowe. Uh, but the other thing is we're also definitely trying to lock down a number of uh, other celebrity chefs. I mean, there's definitely other guys that you know of, uh, and we're going to get them in pretty soon. Uh, I guess it got to the last slide, which is also good. Uh, one thing is, I mean, we just I, I did not want to just go blah, blah, blah. I wanted to make sure that you guys got something out of it, outside of obviously hearing about the great product. So if you look at... Uh, if you look down there, if you have downloaded our app or you have looked at the website, use New Tech. Note it down, New Tech. You get $10 off on your first meal. So that essentially means you're going to get a really good gourmet meal for the price of some crappy fast food. So go for it, note it down, use it. And I'll just let the video play, and I'll stop now and wait for questions. That's just video in the background. It actually does a very much better job than I've done for the last five minutes. So that's all it is. I'm done. I'm done. So any questions? Do you have time for questions? Uh, it is being developed. Uh, my uh, developer told me that if anyone asks about Android, tell them it's coming. <laughs> yes. No, so yeah, that's a, that's a question. The question was, what is the profit model? Uh, how does this whole thing work? So we take care of everything on the delivery front. We take care of advertising the chef's dishes. We make sure that the chef is well compensated way in front. Uh, so the chef prepares the meal per prep, depending on their availability and what's going on. For instance, let's say Chef A wants to feature the dishes only on Monday and Tuesday. We, we put them out there. The chef delivers, uh, actually makes the meal in our kitchen. Uh, we chill it, we store it, and then we send it out to you on Monday. By the time the chef has already gotten their uh, profit share at that point in time. So one person, 10 people, 100 people, doesn't really matter. The chef makes money. Uh, sorry. Uh, the question was, do we have organic options? The answer is, yes, we do. 
Uh, we have plenty of organic options. We also have, I mean, the newest fad, or actually not new, newish, oldish fad, gluten-free. We actually have a lot of gluten-free options too. We still haven't gotten to the raw food diet yet. I still don't understand that myself. Uh, it just seems to be just eat, well, anyways. Uh, outside of that, uh, we pretty much have most other things under the sun. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so your question is, can the end customer actually provide feedback on what kind of dishes they want to feature? The answer is yes. Uh, the good news about, I mean, the difference between us and Munchie, Munchie is a really good service. You guys should test them out too, uh, but we are better. Uh, the, uh, the good news, is, I mean, the difference between us and them is we are actually a platform for chefs. So we are not limited by the number of chefs we have. So for instance, let's say that you're, uh, you're, you, you have just come back from a trip to Indonesia and you're like, hey guys, I need like really good Indonesian dishes. So we can actually seek out uh, Indonesian chefs and make sure they get offered to you. I mean, obviously it won't be just for you. We got to kind of do a little bit of market uh, research and figure out if other people really want it. But yes, we do take feedback. Uh, we have actually done a lot of changes with that. There's also direct feedback on the dishes. So if a dish gets rated four or five, it definitely gets featured a lot more than a dish that's rated, say, three. Uh, but I can honestly say that 99% of our dishes are usually four or five stars. So pretty good. Try it out. One more quick question. Yes. Over there. We definitely do. We hope the food is good enough that they keep coming back. I mean, the customer the customer rate is pretty good. Uh, I don't have all the numbers in front of me. I mean, my engineer just showed me some of the data that we have. Uh, more than 50, I mean, don't, I'm going to butcher it and he's going to kill me. But more than 50 to 60% of the people do come back within two weeks for, to place a second order, which is pretty huge. Uh, we also are uh, doing a lot around, uh, from an acquisition and retention perspective, we're also doing a lot around uh, referrals. So download the app, use it, and then refer us and get another free meal or get dollars off. I mean, you can go in and dig in. I'm not going to do a sell job. Uh, I hope the food sells itself. And honestly, on retention, it is definitely based on the quality of the food. People do come back. I think that might be done. But one more, last. So. Honestly, none of the other co-founders here. I'm the sacrificial goat making the presentation. Uh, the uh, rest of the guys are down in San Fran working hard right now on something. Uh, validation, I mean, the beta testing happened over a couple of months. Uh, we definitely offered a small subset of, of dishes, trying to figure out, like, I mean, questions that she asked, like, how, what, is, what is customer attention? Do people come back for chefs? Is chef even like a really kind of pivot to pivot on? I mean, do people care about food or do people care about chefs? What we've been finding, what we have been finding, finding on feedback is when people actually do track a particular chef. I mean, artists spike up, and a certain popular chef shows up, uh, and the chefs are happy. I mean, as I said, there are two sides of the coin. One is the consumer, the obviously the second one is the chefs. Are the chefs happy working in this platform? And that's where we find a, a lot of validation because chefs keep referring other chefs to come and talk to us. So, as I said, we expanded from three to fifteen chefs in four months, which is interesting. And and we are actually saying no to a few so that we can kind of keep pace build on the growth. Thanks, really appreciate it.